is it? It's quarantine. Tonight on the show, Fleets, John Oliver. And here's your host, Matthew Fred. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to quarantine. I'm your host, Matt Friend. Let's get to the show. Per tradition, the Christmas tree has arrived at Rockefeller Center in New York City, yet in seemingly true 2020 fashion, the tree is a disaster. The left picture is how it looked when it was cut down, and the right picture is how it looked when it arrived. Reminds me of New Year's Eve 2020 versus today. Remember? Oh, come on. We all had that feeling of beaming like the left tree, looking up into the firework-filled sky filled with such hope and optimism about the decade ahead. Now, here we all are. The tree on the right dwindled down to our last few branches, looking like an even more disheveled Dobby. Master give Dobby tree, so Dobby is free! A champion racing pigeon sold by a Belgian trainer broke a world record and became the world's most expensive pigeon when it sold for nearly $1.9 million. Okay, I've wanted to do this ever since I was a little kid obsessed with Family Guy. If you're gonna buy a bird, you might as well buy one that talks. But wait, that would actually be kind of annoying because then you would just be reminded of how much money you spent on the bird. Two million bucks for me? Dumbass! This is why no one in your family talks to you anymore. You financially irresponsible dumbass! Ba -ba! Ba -ba, you dongle! Jeez, better stick to the pigeon. Earlier this week, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter's Jack Dorsey testified to the Senate Judiciary Committee on their platforms, misinformation, and the 2020 election. Would you just look at these two? They look like a young rabbi who grew out a beard to appear wiser who is now tutoring the creepy bar mitzvah boy. Republicans asked 72 questions of the chief executives, 53 of which were, what to do if you forget your password? Republican senators are really old. They don't know how to use technology. Finally, MSNBC journalist and ACT tutor who is a little too confident, Steve Kornacki, was selected as one of People Magazine's sexiest men alive following his in-depth analysis of the 2020 election. Mm, mm, mm. Kornacki puts the magic in magic wall. The results were hotly contested, but Kornacki used his poll to swing those states. That's it for the monologue. Let's get to the show. Earlier this week, Twitter introduced a brand new, totally revolutionary idea, and it's called Fleets. You can now share momentary thoughts that stick around for only 24 hours. Game changing, right? Sorry? They're, they're like stories? They are stories. Oh, well I thought we'd test out this revolutionary new idea called Fleets. Okay, let's check it out. Uh, how about, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco? What's up, everybody? This is Sebastian Maniscalco. I don't understand the concept of a fleet. I just started social media using Twitter. Now, the people, the tech guys, add a fleet. What? I'm just here to promote my new brand partnership, the Checo. But now, I'm supposed to be fleet. Okay, Sebastian, high energy as always. Uh, how about, um, uh, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum? Uh, yes, yes, a fleet, a fleet. Reminds me of being back home in outer space. I actually used to have a cottage, a tiny cottage on Mars, and I'm gonna show it to you now, uh, to the fleeter universe. Uh, cottage on Mars? I wanna go there. Take me with you, Jeff. Um... Uh, Krista Waltz. I did not realize that we were continuing to do the whole concept of the fleet, an invention which will contribute collectively to the demolition of the attention spans of mostly every person on the planet. However, it is a mostly horrendous invention and I hope you are enjoying engaging with me on the platform. And, uh, okay, I'm a little scared to do this one, but, uh, Liam Neeson. This is a message for all my fans. I have a very particular set of fleets. And if you don't like my fleets, 
I will find you, and I will kill you. I'm talking to you, Jack Dorsey, with your crazy beard. Arr. Okay, I think we get the point. Those are fleets. In the first season of Quarantine, we introduced our Trump correspondent, John Oliver, the correspondent who covers everything Trump-related. After the election, we decided to promote John to Biden correspondent. So let's check in with John. Good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome. As many of you very well know, there is a lot of shit going on in the world. In fact, there is so much shit that sometimes I feel like I'm just living in a world completely made up of the particles of poop sweat slowly dripping down Rudy Giuliani's pathetic face. The amount the world is crushing us right now even exceeds the amount I want Adam Driver to trample me and rip me to shreds like Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. Ricky, you savage. Just rail me with your Darth Boner like the little train that could. Okay, here's how shitty the world is. I had a meeting with my producer Seb to discuss this week's episode. In discussing the episode, Seb said, let's stay away from stories related to Trump refusing to concede, as now it seems like older news. For a second I thought, you're right, but then I realized, what the fuck? The President of the United States of America, the leader of the free world, is refusing to leave and all of a sudden we're just not gonna treat it like that's the most important thing? Oh yeah, because we're still in a global fucking health pandemic. That would be like going to a water park. You're in the slide almost all the way down when suddenly you crash into Eric, the man who went ahead of you because he refuses to leave the slide. Now that already seems like a pretty big deal, as you really need to get out of the damn slide, Eric. When suddenly, eight more people come down the slide, expecting no one to be there. And oh yeah, they all have coronavirus. And we're in Bumblefuck, Texas, because where else would a fucking water park be open in a global health pandemic? Right about now would be a pretty good time for Adam Driver to yank me out of that slide like an unruly lawnmower. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Yes, Adam. Yes. Thank you very much. You know, I gotta say, John, even though you still seem incredibly stressed, you seem a bit better after that promotion. Thanks to all my guests tonight, in particular, Jeff Goldblum, I'm serious, please take me to this cottage on Mars. We will be back next Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time with an all-new Quarantine Plus. We've got some really fun announcements. Until then, I'm Matt Friend, and I've gotta go. Uh, yes, yes.